So now we're going to talk about multi-level security. Now, multi-level security uh, strongly associates with uh, two particular access control models. Uh, foremost, the Bella Padula model, and then also the Biba model, which is strongly related to the Bella Padula model. So Bella Padula focus on uh, confidentiality, which is traditionally what is focused on in multi-level security, whereas the BIBA model focus on integrity, which uh, is very useful indeed, and we'll, we'll look at that. Uh, but between uh, these two, we will co cover a problem that's introduced by uh, this uh, when, when concerned with confidentiality, and that's covert channels. That is uh, how you can leak information uh, through this uh, system, despite the policy trying to prevent it. Now, the Bella Padula model, uh, that one has its origins after the Second World War and the Cold War, uh, which led NATO countries to develop a joint classification model. And the classifications are an ordered set of labels uh, where they are uh, starting with unclassified and then confidential, secret and top secret. Uh, so those are the traditional ones. The, the European Union also has the label restricted, which should go between unclassified and confidential. And uh, so these are ordered uh, like this. Now, an individual has a clearance for a particular security level. Uh, and this means that it has, it's allowed to, to read uh, any information which is classified to, to lower levels or the level uh, which the user, uh, the, the individual has clearance for. Uh, we also require some special people to declassify information in this system because otherwise uh, no information could ever be declassified, which means information can only flow upwards as we will see. And each of these uh, levels have different uh, protection mechanisms specified for them. So for instance, things at uh, the top secret level might uh, never be allowed to, to exist in digital form, whereas uh, things at secret must always be encrypted and so on and so on. Uh, now these were just examples, it's not necessarily uh, how it actually is, that depends on the organization uh, using it. Now, the Bella Padula model has two rules. Uh, so the first one is no read up or the simple security property. That one says that no process may read data from a higher level. So that means that information cannot uh, flow down. And uh, the second property is uh, no write down, which means that uh, a process, no process may write data to a lower level. So that also prevents information from uh, flowing down. So you, you, since no one can write to a lower level and no one can read from a higher level, you have uh, prevented uh, both ways that information could flow down. So what this also says is that information can only flow up because you're allowed to write uh, on the same level as you are and uh, upwards. Now the Bella Padula security policy model was published in 1973 and so it, so it has a few uh, years history and uh, systems implementing uh, this type of model is called uh, multi-level secure systems. And this is an example of mandatory access control. So this is a mandatory access control model. And uh, in fact, uh, this model has uh, been the 
mandatory access control model throughout history but now nowadays there are uh, other models as well which uh, class, uh, qualify as a mandatory access control model. Now one problem that occurs in this type of system uh, the mandatory access control system and especially one that focuses on confidentiality is that what happens if we try to write to an existing file at a higher level? What should happen in this case? Now, if we get an error message, sorry, the file already exists, then we have leaked information from the higher level down to a lower level, because since it's on a higher level, we are not allowed to, to know what's there, but now we just learned that there exists a file with this name. Uh, so this is a very problematic situation for uh, these systems. So another example, consider uh, military logistics. So uh, there is a military storage containing top secret uh, equipment. So the equipment is classified as top secret, uh, which means you need to have a top secret clearance to know about it. Now we have a logistician who has only secret clearance. Now, what should he see? Uh, we have a f I'll, I'll, I'll give you a few alternatives. So the first alternative is this storage is full of top secret stuff. So now the logistician will learn that there is uh, top secret stuff there. So the first thing one might say that, okay, so let's try to not show the, this storage to the logistician at all, but this storage is a physical building. It's hard to, to hide that uh, from, from someone. So if he learns this, then, okay, he has learned that this particular storage has top secret stuff. And if he's a spy for a foreign uh, state, then that is actually useful information. Now, the second option is that there is nothing here. So the logistician doesn't see any of the top secret stuff. So basically he sees a storage with, which is empty. Now, maybe this logistician has a lot of equipment that he needs to store somewhere. And if this storage is empty, then this would be the perfect place to, to store it. Uh, however, this would obviously reveal that there is something there that he's not allowed to see because the storage isn't empty, so this wouldn't work. So that would also leak information. The third alternative is that we say that this storage is full of uninteresting rubber boots, uh, in which case maybe there is, uh, this logistician might actually need a, uh, a lot of rubber boots and here he found them. So he will try to, to uh, get them. In which case he will realize that in the storage there is no rubber boots at all. It's just other stuff. Uh, so then uh, information has leaked yet again. So it's really hard to uh, try to construct these things in such a way that they don't leak uh, information. Yeah, but there is, uh, there are ways to, to try to reduce the damage. But the essence of the problem, so this is a covert channel. Now the essence of this problem is that we have processes which are at different, uh, different classification levels, so different, they have different clearance, but they share common resources. So in this case, we have the, the storage, which is a common resource because yeah, that exists in, in physical reality, which is per definition a shared resource. But the logistician and some other logisticians, they have different clearance levels. Uh, so they are not allowed to communicate uh, entirely. But here, the logistician, uh, there, there, is, there are several ways that information might leak between from, from high, a higher level to a lower one. So unfortunately, there is no really good solution to this problem, except uh, either try to avoid having shared resources or try to reduce the bandwidth. 
Now, there are uh, many cases that are basically added, so uh, due to which prevents uh, not sharing resources. Like, for instance, uh, we used to have uh, dedicated computing systems, so we could have a dedicated computing system for the higher level and one for the lower level. However, now we, we tend to move stuff to the cloud which uh, is a shared resource. So then uh, high and low are executing on uh, the, same, uh, the same resources. So they, they, it's even more shared resources than it used to be. So the, the only solution is to try to reduce the bandwidth. And we have one example, uh, the NRL pump, uh, where NRL stands for uh, Naval Research Laboratory. So they developed this solution to try to uh, solve this problem. This was uh, way back in the days that they did this. And uh, so this is applied to a computing system. And what they are trying to do is to, uh, they take, they use buffers uh, to, so when, to, to buffer information to try to, destroy as much of the correlations as possible uh, when uh, some data is flowing back from high to low to reduce the information it carries. So consider that you, you have this scenario where you try to write a file to uh, a higher level and then you have this, uh, um, so you write to a file and uh, then you want to have an acknowledgement to see that it actually worked, that no error occurred. So uh, what this system would do is that it uh, buffers uh, these acknowledgements. So you write two or three or four or five files and it buffers these and uh, then randomizes the timing of returning these acknowledgements. So in this case, uh, if you uh, receive five, uh, five acknowledgements you you know that okay everything worked uh, eh, no problems if you get one eh, one of them saying an error occurred you don't know which file eh, caused the error so this uh, reduces the information per operation however with enough repetition eh, you you can eventually get the same information. However, you see the bandwidth has been decreased because you have to work a lot more to get the same bits of information. So that's how it reduces uh, the bandwidth. And sometimes uh, that's sufficient, sometimes it's not. Uh, so it depends on, on the situation. Now, the last thing we're going to talk about is the BIBA model. Uh, which is a mandatory access control model which focuses on integrity instead of confidentiality. Now, essentially, this is the Bella Padula model, but upside down. It's usually uh, referred to like that. Uh, so the idea, so you can think of this analogy that if you use data with uh, large errors, then the result that you get from computing on that data will also uh, have a certain, at least such a large error uh, in, in the result. So this is the, the general idea of the BIBA model. So what it says is that it has these two rules, same as Bella Padula, but now you have no write up instead of no write down, and you have no read down instead of no read up. So processes, they can read from higher levels because it's totally fine to use uh, data with less errors in them. And uh, that won't uh, contribute to larger errors for, uh, for your, your computations. But you're not allowed to write to that because uh, the computations you do might, uh, might include larger errors. So if you write up, then you will introduce these errors uh, up there. And uh, at, uh, similarly, you can write down because uh, it's fine to use uh, higher quality data and write it down rather than the other way around. 
so one example uh, system which uh, has implemented this is uh, Lomac for Linux. In uh, this case, they when as soon as a process executing uh, in the system uh, was uh, receiving data from the network, which is considered uh, low from an integrity perspective, then the process was uh, degraded from high to low. So it could no longer write uh, to high because uh, this data that it receives might be malicious data, which uh, means that we don't want this process to be able to write to, to high, which is systems files and so on, because it might be uh, affected by a malicious actor. But as long as uh, the, the process is only using uh, data found on the system, then it cannot have been uh, affected by a malicious entity. So that's the idea. Uh, Microsoft introduced similar construction for Windows Vista many years ago, uh, where they ran Internet Explorer in, in, on the low level, whereas the rest of the operating system was operating on, on the high level. So this meant that you couldn't download malware uh, which could compromise the system. Uh, because once the malware came through, uh, Internet Explorer, it would be classified as low integrity, which means it was not allowed to write to uh, any of the systems files. It couldn't install itself uh, and so on. However, it's uh, still ar allowed to, to read from, from higher level, which means that uh, such malware could still extract your uh, your data and steal your data from, from your hard drive. So that would still work, but it could not corrupt it. So, so that's the advantage here. So it provides integrity, not confidentiality. That was everything for this time. Thanks a lot.